Hello, and welcome to my talk titled Discovering Sapa Woman and Other LGBT Heroes. These are heroes I've discovered in the Northern Ireland Plague Collection of the Linen Hall Library. I was meant to give this talk live in the library. Well, I'm still alive, but I'm not in the Linen Hall. Because of the coronavirus, I'm confined to my own house. I'm Richard O'Leary and I'm coordinator of the LGBT Heritage Project. Although required by COVID-19 to socially isolate, I've come up with a dastardly plan. This fairy is not going back on the ground, at least not until I've introduced you to the LGBT holdings of the library's Northern Ireland Political Collection. The collection contains over 350,000 items relating to the troubles in Northern Ireland. Books, press cuttings, posters and ephemera I intend to introduce you and give you an experience of some of the material pertaining to our local LGBT history. To try to do this, I've recreated the Linen Hall Library in my own house. I give you the old bookcase and I fill the shelves with items which mirror some of the stock of the Linen Hall Library. Fortunately, as the collector, note not a hoarder, I personally possess these items, so I didn't have to remove them from the library. Speaking of staff, I'd like to thank Jason Burke of the library for inviting me to talk to you today. This is a pre-recorded talk where I'm talking to a computer screen, which feels very strange to me. I miss having an audience physically present in the room. So I hope you forgive me that I've broken the rules of socialization and invited to join me an audience of two. Please don't report this to the government. This has been LGBT Awareness Week. I have invited two of my oldest gay friends to join me. A gay couple. Ernie and Bert. Hi lads. Can you not keep a bit more social distance? I first visited the Linden Hall Library 34 years ago in May 1987. I can remember the day because on that day in the library, there was a second-hand book sale. In the book sale, I bought a book, this book. The book is called Les Miserables. Inside the cover, I wrote my name, Richard O'Leary, Esquire, May 1987. Why of all the second-hand books on sale in the Linden Hall Library did I select Les Miserables? No, it wasn't because I was a miserable student. Maybe it's because the book is about a young man, Jean Valjean, who is treated unjustly by the law. He migrated to another part of the country and tried to start a new life with a new identity and to find love. In the late 1980s in Belfast, his story resonated with me as a gay man, as it does with many older LGBT persons. To be invited to speak at the Lynn Hall has a particular significance for me. When this library was founded over 200 years ago, it was known as the Belfast Library and Society for Promoting Knowledge. Promoting knowledge, a very worthy endeavour, and one for which there is an enduring need, especially in this week, as we endeavour to increase awareness of LGBT. I had been drawn to visit Linden Hall Library that day in 1987, not just because it is the oldest library in Belfast, but I had also read that the first librarian appointed in Hall Library 200 years ago was, like me, from Cork. Librarian Thomas Russell, inspired by the French Revolution, came north and helped to start a rebellion. Thomas Russell was hanged, hanged in Downpatrick. I don't intend to be hanged for my public talks, and certainly not in Downpatrick. One of the items in his Northern Ireland Political Collection pertains to a character called Sapper Woman. Sappho Woman and I go back a long way, as far as 1989. This is when she first appeared in Belfast. At the time, I was a student at Queen's University. It was there I met Sheila Hamilton. She told me she was a lesbian and from Cookstown. I didn't know they had lesbians in Cookstown. I had never before met a lesbian, or at least not knowingly met one. Lesbians were like fairies in that although they were occasionally mentioned, they were always invisible. 
it was Sheila who first told me about Sappho. Sappho was the woman who lived in ancient Greece. She wrote poems about her love of women. Sappho was doing this even before St. Patrick came to Ireland. Sappho lived on the Greek island of Lesbos. Sheila told me, that's where the word lesbian comes from, from Lesbos. This is a type of useful knowledge that I never learned at school or in any library in Belfast. Sheila and I became close friends and I wanted to give her a present, a special present, but what could I get her? That's when I spotted an advert for the perfect gift, an advert in a magazine. Uh, this magazine, it's called Upstart, a magazine for gay women and men in Northern Ireland. Upstart was produced by the Northern Ireland Gay Rights Association, known as NIGRA. This is my own copy, but you can consult copies of it in the Lynn Hall's political collection. Upstart, January 1990. In it, I read an advert for the first lesbian cartoon book to be published in Ireland. A dangerous, daring and hilarious glimpse into Belfast lesbian life. Available by mail order from Just Books, 7 Wine Tavern Street, Belfast. Well, I'm male, so I decided to order this lesbian publication in person from Just Books, Belfast Alternative Bookshop on Wine Tavern Street. I came out of the shop with this brown paper bag. Carrying this brown paper bag through the streets of Belfast in January 1990, I felt like I was carrying a suspect device. The possession of the contents of this bag could get me beaten up. Even as I tried to explain in my Belfast accent, it's for my friend. Or if I was at home and my dad found it, he might throw me out of the house. When I arrive at Sheila's flat, I take the book out of the brown paper bag and show it to Sheila. Ta-da! Sappho Woman and the Greater Belfast Dykes. It's written by a gay May Kincaid. That's her name. I mean, I get her that couldn't be the author's real name. Gay May Kincaid. This is a feature of some of the LGBT material in the political collection. The need to use pseudonyms. Such was the prejudice against lesbians at the time in 1989 that this local author felt she needed to publish the book under a pseudonym. On the cover of the book, we see there is Sappho Woman flying high above Belfast, wearing her superwoman pink cape. On page 13 in the cartoon strip, Sappho Woman asks us, Does your mother resort to voodoo to break up you and your lover? On page 4 we read, We can all rest assured that whenever there is a dyke in distress, a feminist in a flurry, a woman in worry, and a lesbian in deep shit, Sappho Woman will be there. In 2020, we could do with a superhero like this. But in Belfast in 1990, Sappho Woman had to remain our secret. A year ago, in May 2019, I called into the Lindenhorn Library. I was doing academic research. In the foyer, there was an exhibition, an exhibition from the archives of the library. The exhibition was called Women in the Archives. On the display board in the library, I saw a picture picture of the cover of the same book, Sappho Woman, The Greater Belfast Dykes. Someone, sometime, had donated a copy of the book to the Linden Hall Library. For decades, Sappho Woman had been locked up in the basement among the archives. Even the dangerous paramilitaries at the end of the Troubles had been released earlier than our lesbian superhero. Fortunately, last year, Jason of the Linden Hall had come upon her and released Sappho Woman from the archives. Rediscovering Sappho Woman prompted me to investigate which other lesbians had been hidden from my view. I'd been told by Sheila that it was a magazine, an Irish feminist magazine produced in Belfast, and that many lesbians contributed to it. It was called Women's News. This is my own copy here on my bookshelf, but you can consult copies of it in the Linen Hall's political collection. Uh, many of these issues have been digitised. Indeed, as part of our LGBT Heritage Project, I intend that some of our volunteers will look at this material. This is Women's News from April, May 1990. 
there's a drawing on the front cover of a spiky haired woman appearing like a genie out of the bottle. It says there's an interview with trouble and strife. With names like that, they can be up to no good. There's an article called Words Fearless by the mysterious Fanny Adams. There's a feature in Lesbian Line, that's the telephone helpline. And on International Women's Day 1990, a month of celebrations and protests. It is written in the magazine that this issue was produced by Judith, Jamila, Maria, Catherine, Annie, Elke, Sabine, Myraid and Gillian. I recognise the name of Catherine Couvert and I know that Marie Curie was also involved. This material only exists because women like Catherine and Marie created it. In this our LGBT Awareness Week, I think we should recognise and celebrate their contribution. Whenever I enter a library, I'm curious to see other books which relate to my own life. I'm not thinking here of my political views or my religion, the dominant themes of the political election. I'm thinking of my sexual orientation. Ireland's best known homosexual is probably Oscar Wilde. And in the Lynn Hall Library, I did find books about Wilde, books like the ones I have here in my own collection. One day at the library, at another clearance sale, I bought a second book, this book. It's called Son of Oscar Wilde. Not sure about that title. It's a bit grim. It reminds me of Son of Frankenstein. It literally is by the son of Oscar Wilde. He was Vivian Holland. His original name was Vivian Oscar Wilde. According to Vivian Holland's accounts in his autobiography, Son of Oscar Wilde, Oscar was a devoted and loving father to him and his childhood was relatively happy. But after 1895, when Wilde was convicted of the charge of gross indecency and imprisoned, his wife Constance changed her surname and those of their sons to Holland. See how easily our LGBT history can be erased. The book was probably sold off by the library because it was showing wear and tear. There is a purple library stamp with the word discarded. It may have been discarded, but it was retrieved by me as part of our LGBT heritage. On the inside cover there's a photograph of the original Linen Hall Library and a stuck on label with the library's original official name, the Belfast Library and Society for Promoting Knowledge. Promoting knowledge. Knowledge, that's what I sought when I went into any library. At least this book was once stocked in the library, but it's as LGBT people, how many libraries in the past and even today would we find knowledge about our lives? Last year, I was looking at back issues of our Northern Ireland newspapers. In the newspaper archive, I came across a press article, an article published decades ago in the Belfast Telegraph. Here is that press cutting. The date is 11th of November 1974 and the headline reads, Gay Protest on Library Magazine Ban. I'll read it. A request by the Belfast Gay Liberation Society to stock the magazine Gay News in the City Library has been turned down by the Chief Librarian. Mr. Ivor Crowley. In a letter to the Society, Mr. Crowley said that it would be contravening the law to display the magazine in Northern Ireland as homosexual relations were still illegal here in Northern Ireland. At this time, a gay monthly magazine, Gay News, couldn't make it in the door of Belfast Central Library, nor would shop stock it. A previous generation of gay activists in Belfast, notably Jeff Dudgeon and Brian Gilmore of Nigra, protested against this policy of not stocking our material. Individual gay men had to work out ways of obtaining a copy. One gay man in Belfast in 1982 obtained a copy was my late partner. This is his copy of Gay News displayed on my bookshelf. Gay News from 1982. The strap line at the top on the front page is The Paper Forbidden to the Irish. This strapline refers to the then ban in the Republic of Ireland on the importation of gay news. At the bottom of the front page, it says Gay News, the family newspaper. And there's a feature article on gay fathers. 
how did copies of this magazine make it into the collection of the Linen Hall, its political collection? It wasn't because this or any library ever stocked it. It was because individual gay activists preserved their own copies. It appears from correspondence that I've seen that older gay activists like Sean McGorn and Terry Dave McFarlane deposited a large number of old copies of gay news with the Linden Hall Library. In this, our LGBT Awareness Week, our LGBT Heritage Project would like to encourage to recognise their contribution to the preservation of our LGBT heritage. This is why any of us can today consult the copies of gay news in the Northern Ireland Political Collection. This takes me to another newsletter, which you can find in the Political Collection. It is a precursor to Upstart, which was the newsletter I showed you earlier with the advert for the book Sapphire Woman. It's a newsletter called Gay Star. I have it here on my shelf. Gay Star, Belfast Bulletin of the Northern Ireland Gay Rights Association. This is number three from September, October 1980, with a headline, Negro Vindicated. But I want to take you inside to the page where there's an obituary, an obituary which I'll read out, an obituary for Wilma Creeth. Wilma Creeth died suddenly on August 24th, 1980, during the final stage of an operation. Wilma had been born a male and had grown up as William Creeth and as a man had married and had children. However, from her earliest recollections, she had had the feeling that all was not as it should be, that she was, inside, a woman. Wilma must discover that she was one of those people to whom the medical profession applies the label transsexual. For a long time, she endured the strain of living as a man, but finally, over the age of 40, she could bear the strain no longer, and she began the long and difficult process of physically changing to what she felt was her true sex. It was a courageous decision requiring great perseverance and endurance to fulfil. She also decided that rather than take the easier route of going away and starting a new elsewhere, she would stay in Northern Ireland. That's from Gay Star. As you've heard from me and seen today, the LGBT hero in the Northern Ireland Political Collection of the Linden Hall Library is not about dusty documents or dry facts. It is about people the experiences of LGBT lives. This talk has been an opportunity not just to introduce you to some of the content of this archive, but to highlight how challenging it is to even get some of this material into a library to begin with. I also want to acknowledge the people who created these materials that seemingly particularly appropriate in this LGBT Awareness Week. We are thankful for the lives of Safa Woman, Catherine Couver, Marie Curie, and other women of Women's News. Jeff Dudgeon, Richard Kennedy, and Sean McGowan, Terry Dave McFarlane of Nigra, and of William Creed. This talk has been a bit of a fairy tale. My fairy tales are incredible but true, and I like my fairy tales to have a happy ending. Maybe you're wondering whatever happened to the creator of Sapphire Woman, Gay May Kincaid. Her real name is Gil McKnight. She's a successful writer, and this is one of her novels. Falling Star, a lesbian matinee romance. With an online search, we can learn that Gil spends as much as possible her time in Lesbos, Greece, which she considers home. She will be found traveling back and forth between Greece and Ireland in a rusty camper van with her rusty wee dog. Gil enjoys writing, roses, and by necessity, DIY. I hope this talk will inspire you to check out for yourselves the LGBT materials in the Northern Ireland Political Collection. If you would like to keep up with the work of my LGBT Heritage Project, you can do so on our project Facebook or Twitter at LGBT History NI. Thank you to the audience for your attention and also to Ernie and Berth for keeping me company. Stay safe.